Now back to talking tunes. Welcome back to talking tunes, and we're going to be talking with John Van Wyk here in a minute. But I just got to tell you real quick. Uh, this morning when I got up to to give John a call, I uh, first thing I did is I went to get a cup of coffee, did the K cup thing, put my K cup in the in the pot, put it down, and, and I forgot to put a cup in there. So hey, I got a uh, bunch of soup right there that I really couldn't drink. But anyway. So then, anyway, I uh, put a cup in there and got my cup of coffee, came downstairs and uh, getting things ready, and I thought, nah, I'll have my first cup of coffee before I do any talking or any interviews or anything, wake myself up a little bit. So I drank my first cup of coffee, and I went back upstairs to make me another cup of coffee because my my office and my uh, studio is in the basement. And then I got my second, second cup of coffee, put it down, took a sip, and I was going to give a set it on my my phone system here for, to give John a call. And uh, first thing I did was knock the cup of coffee all over my lap. It was nice hot coffee on the lap. It felt good. But anyway, we made it, and we'll talk with John Van Wyk on Talking Tunes. Talking Tunes, and we're here with the one, the only, Mr. John Van Wyk, Johnny V. Johnny V. in Uri. Greetings from Southwest Florida. Yeah, I was gonna say you're in Florida too. Yeah, so there you go. Now, it's it's a little actually it's kind of scary because it's actually a little better, I think, in Florida than it is right here in Michigan these days. It's, well, some um, some different things the governor has done down here in Florida, and that uh, well, I could probably talk for hours about this and ask her about the differences yeah. of uh, what the governor DeSantis is doing down here as opposed to what Governor Whitmer is doing up there. And and we've got our hotbed in south uh, east corner of the state. That seems like a, that's kind of a popular place for diseases to happen in southeast corners of the state. Yeah, the southeast corner of the state here is Miami Dade, Broward County, uh, Miami Fort Lauderdale area, uh, and that's the hotbed. That's the, that's the epicenter for. Obviously, I, you know, I've, I've said uh, quite a few uh, times that uh, these are really centered around where there are international airports. Yeah, I wonder why. Yeah, there you go. Um, the international airports in uh, Miami and Fort Lauderdale uh, handle a lot of people coming in the country from uh, South America and and uh, the, uh, the Caribbean countries and, and and the customs down there, and as Chicago does, and so does Detroit, and so does New York, New York and New York and LaGuardia and um, and Dallas. I mean, I mean, the big places where there's international airports is where the hot, hot beds are. Yeah, yeah. So. I, uh, I, I wanted to say since, since we have so much, so much bad going on right now, yeah, I'm not saying that we could, uh, lighten the mood up, but I mean, at least try to, but I mean, you did send something to, uh, uh quite a few people about the pandemic golf. So I, I kind of want well, to. Oh, yes. Well, the, the pandemic golf is kind of interesting because I've actually just said uh, I played with uh, a couple of guys from Muskegon that everybody knows late night Dwight from, uh, from our owner of rackets, uh, and uh, Dwight and Kay have been living down here for a number of years. And I played with uh, Hobie Thrasher yesterday, uh, who was the uh, owner proprietor of the uh, Bear Lake Tavern and known as a restaurateur par excellente in uh, Muskegon. And so it's, it's get a, a perspective of uh, the difference down here. And we actually played golf yesterday. Yeah. They're, they're... There are rules. I mean, that there are rules. I mean, the governor has sent down rules of golf courses. Uh, they, they treat uh, up in Michigan. The governor has said basically that the, um, uh, golf course workers up in Michigan are not considered essential workers. Right. And so golf courses in Michigan have been pretty much ordered to be closed. Down here, the governor says, no, the, that's part of our economy is uh, you know, our golf courses. And that the golf courses need to be maintained. They need to, and we're going through a major dry spell down here in Florida right now. It's a, it's a yeah, I heard. Drought. I heard, yeah. And so, and so they, they've got to keep the, these, uh, these, uh, horses watered at this point in time, and in order for them to be sprinkled and watered and and mowed and everything else, you got to have workers there. Right. And and they're 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 fearful down here if they don't water those courses, if they don't maintain them, they may never come back, or it may take years right. for them to come back. And so the governor's saying it, it's a very uh, a big part of our our um, our economy, our golf courses down here, and they need to be maintained. And as long as you got workers there. And you can abide by the rules that have been set up by Tallahassee. And the rules are, are basically uh, one person to a cart. Or if you, if you come with somebody, if you ride with somebody there, you can opt out and you can say, no, uh, we uh, want two people to a cart. But one person to a cart. Um, they, they, they can't have the pro shop open or the restaurant open. 
Uh, they have to have a window where you go and kind of walk up to and hand them your credit card and instead of going into a pro shop. They have to do that. Uh, they have to, and there's actually a rule about, about the the pins that are on the green, the, that sticks on the greens. They, they have to be permanently placed. In other words, you're not supposed to touch them. There's actually big courses that we play down here. Uh, have taken, you know, the you know the noodles you use in swimming pools. Yeah. So they've done that. They've they've sliced about one inch, uh, one one or two inch uh, sections off there. There's a hole in the middle. They put the pin right in there. So when the golf ball hits the pin, it drops down. It only drops down about maybe half the ball length, so it doesn't drop all the way down into the cup. Okay. Okay. So so you can just pull your ball out of there without touching the pin. And the other thing, say social separation is always a thing on the golf course. You're very seldom standing next to anybody that's swinging a six foot club. So, you know, it's a matter of, it's, it's a natural, natural uh, uh, separation. Thing. Yeah. And, and so it's, uh, it, 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 it's a matter of, you know, everybody saying, hey, you, you want to get out and they, they've had a problem. I understand um, problems in, in Michigan right now and people go flooding to the state parks and flooding to all of the, the outdoor recreational spots because that's the only thing to do. Right. Well, that, you know, if, and, for instance, uh, right over at uh, Duck Lake over here by Lake Michigan, um, you see a lot of kids congregating over there and they're all getting out of the cars and they're going to each car and talking to each other. So it's like, that's not helping at all, you know? And no. the, so I, I, I'm surprised that that's not, uh, the law, the law is kind of not over there watching things. Cause like I say, kids are getting out of the car. Kids, you know, I, I, I got to say that if I, when I was a kid, I probably would be doing the same thing, you know, even though the parents sure. tell them yeah. not to, I'd probably be doing the same thing, you know, but it's, it's got to be watched, I guess. I don't know. It's just, it's strange. Yeah. And it does, but you know, people are going to get a little, uh, cabin fever here pretty soon. Oh, yeah. and start doing some great, some crazy things. You already know? are. Already are getting that <laughs> yeah. cabin fever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, so it's a matter of, so again, golf courses are open down in Florida. Uh, we've seen a couple of them close only because they, if they, um, like the city of Fort Myers, for example, owns four golf courses. They've closed two of the golf courses because they've they've uh, transported all of their carts to the two that are open, okay. and so they can make it available a cut one cart per person. Per person so they, had, yeah. they shut. They they're still maintaining those other courses. They're still watering them and cutting them and everything else. Uh, because that's again part of the economy, and in Michigan, you know, Michigan it's not quite golf season up there yet. I'm sure there's been there's some people out playing, uh, but now can't. But but in in Michigan, uh, Oscar, this is the time of year that the golf courses bring their 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 courses back to life. Right. This is when this is when they aerate the, the greens and and or put punch holes all over in them, and this uh, this is when they fertilize, and this is when. They start. They water tremendously, and they start. You know, they have to trim the trees and do all those kind of things. This is this is the time of year when they do that. Yeah. And if they're not allowed to do that, and all of a sudden, okay, now you're open and it's the middle of June, you may have some serious conditions that will warrant that they can't play in the courses. Right. So it's a, it's a matter of saying, come on, there's some there's some little bit of a logic here, and it, especially when you know ninety percent of the the COVID cases are over in the southwest corner of the state. Now they did. Now the now the county administrators down here in Dade and Miami counties and Broward County have um, closed down the golf courses over there. And so, what, what one of the things that that's caused is caused tourism from going down Alligator Alley and people over there that want to play golf come over here. Okay. Yeah. So there, there so you go. They, bringing it so over so there. The governor saying, "Hey, wait a minute. Uh, yeah. you, know, you know what's going on here? They've, and they've, yeah, they've interviewed people and stuff." An interview uh, of a couple of guys that were playing in a course down in Naples that were from Miami said, "Hey, we had to play golf, so we yeah. just jumped in the car and drove across the state to play golf." Yeah. So how do you how do you oh, feel yeah. how do you feel as far as yourself though? I mean, because you're like one of the statistics. You're one of the older. Oh, you're, yeah. you're above sixty. So there you go. I just put I'm it that above way. Sixty, and I have asthma, and I've had asthma my whole life, and so I'm I'm one of the vulnerable ones. Right. And, but you mean you take precautions, Oscar? Right? You know, I. I think I have people have accused me of being a germaphobe over the years, but I yeah, me but too. It, but it's in, and they, well, I mean, you know, I've, I've always, I mean, for the the longest time, I've carried um, wipes uh, that I, I wipe off things before yeah. I touch them. Yeah, um, you know, I've been very careful in restrooms my whole life. I work, I work out a lot, and the people that know me know that I've been either a member of the Y or the fitness center, and uh, now uh, Planet Fitness, not well, both up here or down here and up there. So, and, and I take precautions of not getting sick there. Right. And making sure I wear gloves when I'm working 
on, on weight equipment and, and, and making sure the equipment is washed off before I use it and after I use it. And, and I've done that my whole life. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, we got us into that habit back in, in the YMCA uh, downtown Muskegon back in the, the, the late 60s and 70s. Right. You know, that we wiped, we wiped off the equipment. We, we took care of, of, of not, not you know, wearing uh, coverings on our feet when we're in the showers and those kinds of things. I've always done that. And people say, oh, you're a bit of a germaphobe. I say, no, I'm not. I just, I'm just being careful. That's all. I've, I've always been that way. Yeah, yeah. And so I continued, I continued to do that. And now it's kind of odd for me to um, uh, be flying home this week, and and uh, and, and they're basically saying wear facial coverings. That that's kind of odd, yeah, for me to do something like that. But I probably will. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that I definitely would now. I definitely do now when I go to the store. When I go to the store, I have a I have a face mask and I have my rubber gloves on. So there you go. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I was so talk, it, it, talking to Greg Roberts last week, and he said, you know, he gets so mad because uh, it's true, though, because people are t- taking these gloves and masks off when they get in their car and throwing them on the ground right there. It's like, oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> what's, it's, what's up with that? Yeah, I, I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> they, they stick their hand up inside the mask to cough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Or, like I say, I've seen them. But, you know, this, I've this seen them hanging them on the. On the Hanging them on the rear view mirror too to just use them over yeah, and over you know, again. But anyway, but, but there are funny things that, that happen. You know, but actually, the, the bars and restaurants down here have been closed for the last two weeks. When I when I got down here, I mean, they were still open and and they were they were saying practice social distancing and everything else. But it's one of those kind of things. When somebody sneezed before, people said "cause I'm tight" or yeah. "God bless you." Now they're saying "check please." Yeah, or they or they well, jump out of their chairs or. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. I actually, I did that. I was going to the grocery store. This is a couple of weeks back, and I, I was going to the grocery store, and some guy sneezed really loud. You know, he was sitting in his truck or whatever, and I looked over at him, and he like cussed me out. It was like, "What are you looking at?" Me? Was, hey, man, I'm just seeing where cover it came that. from. I just want to cover, I want to duck and cover from that. You know, so yeah. But, but the, Oscar, the other the other big thing, and, and kind of the difference between Michigan and Florida. Uh, when this all hit, and they, they closed schools down here uh, about three weeks ago, and but and Florida has had, and I don't know if it's, if, if, I think it's probably because of, of hurricane situations and, and weather disasters that happen quite frequently down here. But they have every county, they have county school districts down here, like an ISD, but um, I'm in Lee County, which is Fort Myers, Bonita Springs, uh, Cape Coral, primarily the three biggest cities. And uh, they have 19 school, 19 high schools in, the, in one school district, all Lee County public wow. schools. And so they, they, they're organized a little bit differently, but they have distant learning programs. And when they went and, and uh, basically they did an inventory of families who did not have uh, a laptop or Chromebook, and they issued Chromebooks to every family that did not have a laptop that was functioning in their home within uh, two days. Of, yeah. of them closing the schools, okay. and and they put into place their distant learning programs. They are requiring teachers. School buildings are not closed down here. Teachers are still reporting to school at their normal time, and they are holding classes on Zoom and a few other uh, programs that they're there, and they're requiring their students to check in at eight o'clock in the morning and check out at two o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. And, and so, and they have lesson plans, and these, these were all in place. They didn't have to reinvent the wheel like supposedly Michigan is doing. The, you know, the governor up there has basically said, "Okay, 456 school districts in Michigan, come up with your own plan." What? Why didn't you have a plan? I get it. Yeah. You know, so it's showing some real deficiencies in in the way uh, the Michigan state government. Well, and, I know. I know. I got to say, a lot of. You know, a lot of the, a lot of my grandkids, a lot of my grandkids, though they are they are doing that already. So it is in place here in the, in the White Lake area, and so also in, in certain areas of, um, in Muskegon too. So I know it's in place. Well, now. they they had they had addressed many years ago down here the um, access to the internet, and even in the rural areas in the right, state of Florida, right. they have cell phone access or hotspot access, and have had for many years, and they've addressed that. A lack of, uh, and in Michigan, we've kind of lifted up to every county to do it. Um, Muskegon County tried doing it 15 years ago, 
uh, and putting up their own fiber optic network, and uh, that still is functioning, but it wasn't functioning the way it was designed to do back in back in the days when I was still at the phone company, and they were building their own private network, and they were going to provide internet access to everybody in the county. Yeah. Fifteen years ago. Yeah. Fifteen years ago, somebody dropped the ball. Right. You know, and you know, so it's a matter of maybe the voters ought to be waking up and starting saying, "What kind of leadership would we really have?" You know, and and both the county and the state, and saying, "What are we even doing?" Yeah, you know, so it's that. You know, I get on my political so much. Right? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of let you go. <laughs> but that, that that again, you know, my 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 boys are in their their forties, and yeah. they they were. Uh, they were talking on the uh, and we were both bannering back and forth about something on the on uh, Facebook the other day, and I said, "This is just like old times, guys. Gas prices are cheap, and you're grounded." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I have to say, you got you got. I mean, uh, Terry and I basically take a trip uh, every night every night to watch the sunset. Basically, we have beautiful Lake Michigan here or White Lake, sure, you know. Sure. So, I mean, that's pretty much it, you know. Besides spending some time outside when it's not too cold. So, I mean, well, what else can we do? Yeah, and I try to take a little positive, to try to make some positive spins there. I mean, there will be some positives that come out of this. Number one, we're finding out that, you know, most of the antibiotics and, uh, that are, we, we're prescribed in this country are made in China. Maybe we shouldn't, maybe that shouldn't have been happening. Yeah. You know, maybe we shouldn't have China having a stranglehold on our medications. Oh, well, they've had a, a stranglehold on us for years. Yeah, and I think a lot of some people are going to wake up to saying maybe we shouldn't have that. Maybe we should be manufacturing those drugs in the United States. Yeah. And, and a lot of other things, so the ventilators. I mean, obviously, we're taking over the world, replacing, making ventilators. It's no longer China. We're producing more ventilators in this country right now than China is manufacturing. So well, we're yeah. going to take over that market. Yeah, we've got the, the, so, the, so the car companies so right other, there. Yeah, and I would think uh, making face masks. I mean, the, yeah. I mean uh, the, uh, the M95 masks are being produced by 3M by the millions. And instead of importing them from China, well, maybe they're maybe made in Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I mean, I, those are some positive things that we're going to, to get out of this, along with you know we're going to find out that maybe kids can learn when they're at home. Yeah. They can learn on, on a distant learning or at home learning, and then then we're going to find out too that without these kids going to school every day, and that, you know, everybody's known forever uh, that that's a petri dish for for kids oh. picking up viruses oh, and yeah. bringing them home. Yeah. You know, so obviously. all of a sudden they're not they're not doing that and the parents are saying wash your hands every 15 minutes and they're not in school where they aren't washing their hands right. and not getting spreading germs around. We may have found the, the cure for the common cold. <laughs> yeah, but then you got you got to have some networking so to speak. You got to have uh, kids getting together. I mean, because they're going to find oh, a sure way to not. get yeah, together. You gotta Just, and you got to have sports. And, yeah, and, and yeah, that, that, exactly. That, 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 that's I mean, that's got to be the hard thing right there, the sports, when they all were all signed up, especially the senior years. The senior years, oh, I can sure. see, are just going crazy right now. Well, and the development of the kids that are coming up in, in the little leagues and, and the, the youth sports, and they're missing seasons now. Yeah. And then the kids that have developed and the kids that are, are in high school, and, you know, they're, they're looking, I mean, high school, you all know that, I mean, they, the 10, 10, 11, and 12 year at, at, in school is a time when, when kids grow and develop, right. you know, and they may become stars or senior year that they weren't when they were in ninth grade. And all, all of a sudden you've got this almost a, you know, a, a two or three years of kids that are not having that regiment of practice and that regiment of playing games. And then, uh, you know, looking at college scholarships and, and looking at the future of the NCAA I mean, this all starts on a local basis, and if you're not doing that that youth development in sports, they're missing out on a ton of stuff unless we get this thing fired back up. Right. I agree. Now, what, what about, like I say, the, the library? I miss my library. I go to my library all the time, and, of course, that's closed. Oh, sure. do you, but uh, most most people don't even use the library anymore, do they? I mean, I mean, all the stuff. I mean, even even the library has hoopla that you watch well, videos or, boo, or, or TV on. I don't know you know, I guess, I guess, Oscar, I follow the Hackley Public Library quite a bit, and, and on my radio show, I've got the people on there from the Friends of the Library quite frequently, and knowing how they've adapted to, I um, mean, people supposedly not going to the library, that library is busy Yeah. in downtown yeah. Muskegon. Yeah, ours is they too. Put, they, yeah. they do things with the Friends and, and with their archive and, uh, and over the Torrent House, and just the programming that they do, if you look at 
the Hackley Library website, hackleylibrary.org, and and see what they've got going on every day of the week. Right. You know, you can you can take classes on learning how to use uh, different kinds of computer programs, and and I mean they they really have adapted to being able to do that. And the, and the Muskegon uh, District Library system has done the same thing, and they've got story times for kids. Right. They've got all kinds of things that they've adapted. It's not just people going in there and reading books or checking out books every day. Right. Uh, so, so so they really have adapted to being a, a community center. Well, just and like so they, every everybody seems to be adapting. I mean, especially the the internet is 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 so filled with everything. I mean, churches. I mean, people people have their churches. They can watch them right on right on uh, the internet. You know, right on Facebook. Oh, so. Sure. So That's it's been somewhat controversial down here too, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. They did they did arrest a pastor on Sunday. For yeah, I heard about that. I heard yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah he wasn't going to do any social separation stuff, so yeah. he got arrested. So <laughs> we'll find out how that played its way through the court system. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, what court system? I mean, you know how how do they do the court systems anymore? I mean, right now it's kind of hard, isn't it? With the uh, well, yeah, they're not. And I we talked to, to DJ Hilson quite frequently, and obviously the Cup County County Prosecuting Attorney's Office is still uh, we're still working. There's still crimes being committed, and and there are, are arraignments and pretrials and those kind of things going on. But they're trying to keep the jail as uh, cleaned out as possible. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so they don't because that's a, another petri dish. Well, yeah, because I've got a I've got a friend that is a a guard in the Muskegon district, and I also got a friend or a family member that's a, a guard in the uh, uh, UP district. You know, and then right there, you've got yeah. the coronavirus is 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 spreading from the prison up in the UP, which kind of scares the bejeebies out of me. You know, no, oh, sure, oh, but. Yeah. Uh, well, it's the whole thing. It's just, it's just scary. I don't, I mean, how do you, how do you get, how do you have fun with this? You can't, you know, I really can't. No, I really no. can't. I just, but aside, so just said, it, well, I'm going to just talk about it and, uh, and let people know what, what the, our opinion is. And of course they can share their own opinion probably on your show too. Can't they? Or do you do? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and, and we do, you know, and, but you know, we're actually, uh, with the, the company that we're doing the, the radio program at that we, we can't have any guests in the studio. We, uh, uh, we got to do everything uh, by phone. By phone, yeah, and uh, yeah, you know, which is okay. You know, it, it, it's all right because uh, actually, you can get some some higher power higher power talent to call again. <laughs> <laughs> we had the lieutenant governor call in. Well, yeah, because so like they that. got he, nothing he better to do. <laughs> no, he never comes drive to Muskegon to be in the studio. Right, so, right. So we, we were able to say, "Hey, uh, this is uh, John Van Dyke, and I host a talk program." And 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 they say, "Could you uh, be on for fifteen minutes?" And so uh, it's kind of easier to get guests. Yeah. Right now, so <laughs> yeah. Hey, maybe I got to start doing that then, right? Yeah. No, no, I'm not a I'm not a political guy. You know that, so I just. Uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, just yeah, a political guy, but we're keeping up with uh, what's going on. And, and you know, we found out that there are a ton of news sources that um, I hadn't looked at before. Uh, that Shoreline Media Group. I don't know. If yeah. You, you, yeah, you, I like, do you get that. that. Yeah. Well, that you know, the White Lake White Lake Beacon and the Oceana uh, Herald and the Lightning Daily News are right. one group of papers, and they have a great website. I, I watch, look, look, look at it every day. Of, yeah, you know what I like what I like about those three papers is they talk about cool things and good things that are happening in the community. Right. You know, they they've got the reporters to go out and and talk about bake sales. You know, and, and talk about uh, people that are you know moving back to the area and those kind of kind of heartwarming stories yeah. of people and their successes, and so it's kind of fun to. to I, I like reading that every day. I, I look at I look at that every morning and I'm going. There's some really cool things happening in Ludington and Petwater and yeah, and uh, yeah. Hart and Hart and Shelby and Rothbury and and they cover it so well. I mean, they, they really do. And that's the kind of the one that I kind of the one I, I watch or I look, uh, look at every day, just because you know it gives me all that information. Where the other ones are just kind of depressing. So. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's some some good uh, Facebook sites with uh, some people that are operating groups of people and and keeping up with them. And at the same time, you're also finding out a lot about uh, uh, the reading programs in Muskegon and. Uh, the, the winter sports uh, people, uh, the Muskegon Sports Council, and what they're doing with Dune University out there, and learning about nature at home, and doing uh, those kinds of things that that they've adapted again to this situation. You know, the saying, "Come out to the state park or do it in your backyard." Right. You know, those kind of things. Yeah, so, so it's some really good stuff that's going on. Well, you're gonna have to hope, hope that hope that all that continues. I mean, even after this whole virus thing clears out of here, and uh, that. 
there'd be a lot of people that all of a sudden wow, said some really cool things in nature. I mean, the Skagen Conservation District, uh, in the next couple of months, are going to have a drive up, buy them online uh, sale of uh, native plants in, in Michigan. So you can you know, go out and buy yourself a half a dozen white pines and seedlings and, and, and start doing. I think we're going to see some a resurgence maybe in gardening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing else to do at all. Might That's as well right. Take care of the lawn. <laughs> I tell you what, my, my yard will probably look better than it's ever looked for years. So. Well, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a resurgence <laughs> in gardening. Yeah. <laughs> I got to get my old lawnmower going again just to make yeah, sure. And, yeah, and with the and, and with the with the marijuana laws in Michigan, there could be a resurgence in growing lots of different things. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I got a backyard that's kind of got a lot of sun. Yeah, Maybe you yeah. probably get some pretty good sunlight there. Too. I do. Yeah, in the backyard get a lot of sun. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. You know, it takes <laughs> some good soil and sunlight. <laughs> there you go. Got a new business started. There we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, John, I I have a safe trip home. Back to Michigan. Oh, yeah. Yep. And, uh, um, yeah, we'll, if they let me back in, I'd probably be self quarantined for yeah. a period of time the governor's requiring now. Uh, yeah. What is it? Like 14 days or something like that? 14 now? days, yeah. I think it is. Yeah. So, yeah, well, it's like I can still talk to you on the phone anyway. So <laughs> we call you and see, oh, yeah. Yeah. see how you're enjoying Michigan. Now, I heard, I did yeah. hear though about the golf course. So I did hear that they're talking about opening the golf courses in Michigan. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, that's it, fun. You know, I, I mean, it made some, some jokes about the, but the, the urologist, it's a neighbor of mine that they all did has developed a, a new test for colon cancer and you sit on your phone. <laughs> 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 yeah. There's all kinds of stories like that going around for self tests on a lot of different things. Oh gosh. <laughs> Some of I couldn't write about. <laughs> yeah. That's that's <laughs> or talk about on the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could say I really did enjoy this uh, thing you wrote up here. I know you had some time on your head, so there you go. But uh, it was very oh, yeah. funny. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. funny. Yeah. I actually uh, let, I, you know, Terry and I both read it, so we enjoyed it. So, <laughs> All right, buddy. That's fun stuff. So. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll see you when I get back up there. All right, thanks, John. <laughs> okay, thank you. All in to well, $500 in the tie game. The great writer George Bernard Shaw once wrote, It's such a wonderful thing. What a crime to waste it on children. What is it? A whipping. LAUGHTER